yesterday we were very busy with the Parshas Haman. Parshas Haman, as we pointed out, is something that could be said every single day, should be said every, every single day if possible. Why? Because every single day we should focus on the idea that Rabban Shalalem, Hashem loves us and He wants to give us a Parnasa, and we just have to do the right thing. Chavis Alvav says a very interesting concept. He says, why is it that Hashem had to give us Parnasa and it has to come through difficulty? And he says an interesting principle. Although the Pasuk itself, the Torah says, It was one of the curses that we have, that we were given to man, that a person has to sweat it out in order to receive Panasa. But the Chavis Alvav says the following, two reasons. He says, the reason for working for Panasa, number one, is to test a person to see. With the difficulties, if a person is going to be mamre, a person is going to rebel, a person is not going to believe in the Rebbe Nisham, a person is not going to be honest, it's a test that when we do, when we work for our Parnasa, to see if we're going to be honest and still be dedicated and follow all the rules. That's number one. Number two, says the Chavah Salavavas, in order to make sure that we're busy. Sometimes when a person is not busy, a person ends up being busy with other things. Says the Chavah Salavavas, if that's true, a person that is very careful and shows that the, so shows Hashem that he's honest and shows Hashem that they're a person that's going to be not lose integrity and not going to lose his honesty and a person that is even if he's not going to be busy with with Panos he's going to be busy with Yiddishkeit and he's going to be busy with spirituality and growth so then the Rabbi Hashem says you know what you don't have to work so much and although of course there's exceptions the Chavis Havos himself says there's exceptions this is the concept of Panasa. But as we go through the Yerushalmi Masech Hasbarach, the Yerushalmi Masech Hasbarach tells us pearls of wisdom and pearls of customs that can be done every single day. So besides the idea of Pasha Saman, there's also the concept of Aser HaSadibos that are hinted in the three Parshiyas. This is not in the Bavli as far as I remember. There's only in the Yerushalmi that says that a person, when he's saying Kriyat Shema, can actually have in mind for the Ten Commandments. Why is it so important? Because in the old days we did say the Ten Commandments every single day because there's so much hidden, all the roots of all the mitzvahs of Sadegon says that all the mitzvahs are, are actually embedded in the Ten Commandments because they're incredible principles. But because of what's called Tarimus, I mean, the people started thinking that the only thing that we do have is the Ten Commandments. They said, you know, we can't read Ten Commandments anymore. But we should still try to see it in the, in the three parashas. For example, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elkein Hashem Echad already has a Noichi and Lo Yelechah, the first two commandments. Where is Vahavta? Where is Lo Yisrael, the next of the Ten Commandments? In the Pasuk, Vahavta Hashem Elkecha. Yishami says, What has Vahavta Hashem Elkecha got to do with Lo Yisrael Hashem Hashav? Don't say Hashem's name in vain, says the Yerushalmi, because when a person loves his master, he doesn't say his name is vain. And the Gemara continues to show all the Ten Commandments, which we won't we don't have time now to do so, but it's Kedai. There are Sidurim that point out exactly where in Blina, and maybe tomorrow we'll continue. What else? Kriyas Yamsuf. The Gemara says that every single day we should th- be thinking about the Yetzirah Mitzrayim, the Rebbein Hashem is Malchus, and the fact that he took us through Kriyas Yamsuf. The Yushalmi says Kriyas Yamsuf is something we should focus on every single day. So even though it's this week's parasha and it's going to be something that we're going to be able to reawaken all the experiences and what's called all the Yeshua's that existed in Kiyas Yamsuf, it's something that we could do every single day. And we'll leave off with what the Mishnah Burr, the Chavetz Chaim, quotes. And it comes from actually from the Sefer Haredim that says, when a person says, Kiyas Yamsuf, with Kavana and Simcha, Nimcholin lo Yavanoisa, his sins are forgiven. It's so bothered me. What's the reason? If I say Kriyas Yamsuf, and the way it's described is that a person has to imagine, using your imagination, imagine you're, you're standing in the Yabasha, Chayam, you're in the land part, you're crossing the Yamsuf, the Egyptians are drowning, and a person's being saved, and if you imagine this, you go through your imagery, and you, ex- and you try to re-experience, Why? I'll leave you with a good question. I want to hear a good gishmak of shat, that's everyone.